has changed. America has changed. If something were to happen tomorrow... How self-sufficient would you be? Could you grow your own food? Could you sustain your own livestock? Could you survive? This is the We Grow Our Show with Nick and Don. Nick and Don talk about everything from politics to planting. They cover techniques, methods, and tips on how to not only survive, but thrive. Visit the website at WeGrowHours.com. Lock and load. This is the We Grow Our Show. Get your grow on. Welcome to the We Grow Our Show. For those of you just joining, you've missed out on a lot. We've got 35 other episodes out there. More than that. 36? 38. 38? When did that happen? (laughs) I'm getting them all put up on YouTube, by the way. Oh, yeah. do you have like video footage of us? Because no, nobody wants to see It's just the picture that. and then the audio. Okay, but I'm gonna try and get some video footage of like when we go to the Prepper Fest. Um, well, then I got on the 25th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so do I. Okay. So I'm gonna put like some video, some YouTube up of that. Maybe I think we should do it like a little podcast there or something. Yeah, see well, if we can get some guests to come at, sure, right why on not? and just ask them questions about cool products we see or something. I don't know. We'll do something fun. I'm going to have a good time. I'm a little bummed I don't get to take my rabbits to go around. No, you don't. Oh, but that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Well, rabbits and heat don't get along well. And not knowing if it's going to be hot out or not. Well, and when they stick you outside, it every makes it tough. single expo that I have ever done, there's never been an issue with taking the rabbits inside. Right. Never. And all of a sudden, boom, my rabbits are. Well, outside. I think it's probably the venue. It's not. It's the organizers. <laughs> Seriously. It, it's on air. I don't care. <laughs> this comes back to him. He'll know. I already told him my piece in it. Yeah. Well, so we will, uh, we'll be out at Westworld on October 25th. Mm-hmm. And we'll be teaching rabbits. Well, I'll be teaching rabbits 101. Well, you won't be. I have to get my presentation together <laughs> for those black soldier flies. Don's look of realization weekend, just now it? was was my feeling 10th grade in high school. Oh, no. Wait, that's it's this due weekend. today. Yeah, it is. So that won't we, and... So we will have been out at the Prepper yes. Fest, and I hope we saw you there. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? It was great seeing you all at the Prepper Fest this weekend. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> all right. So our next event coming up is in March. So nothing that I know of before that. If you're in Kingman. Oh, right. There's an expo on the 15th? I 15th believe 15th and is. 16th. Um, we're going to get some classes together. I have my own teaching area. How so cool. We'll do a couple of one-on-one classes and maybe get some killing on. I don't know. I got to get that okayed first. I can murder a rabbit in front of people. <laughs> a little over the top? A little bit, but okay. hey, whatever. It's you. Murder the cute and fluffy. We know that. Yeah, that's so what I do. It's been a long week. We took a week off. Yeah. I had some personal things to go attend to. You had just gone on vacation and needed to get caught up. Yeah. Did you get caught up? No. No. I didn't either. I slept I, a little. That was cool. Yeah, and I I didn't go on vacation, I guess. I drove to Colorado, picked somebody up, and drove home. Yeah. Well, and I trudged through the giant Petri dish that's called Disneyland and yes. came back with a few versions of HEPA surfalades. <laughs> nice. <laughs> or whatever crap was it's not as bad as a bowler, park. I guess. Right? Yeah, no. Well, and that's, I've told my wife, I'm like, seriously, we're going to Disneyland the week that Ebola enters the United States. You are just, yes, let's well, do it. Well, at least it's not the week that it broke out in Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. Oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, we had fun. The kids loved it. It was fun watching the kids enjoy it. But it, it's even the as, happiest place on earth. Dude, even as a little kid, I didn't like that place. Yeah. I was like, seriously? Mickey Mouse is freaking me out. My, my father and my stepmother are into Disney. Yeah? Oh, she's like a Disney expert. It's it's unreal. They go out there all the time. They have a blast. And I like going with them because they know all the stuff to do and when to go where there's no <laughs> lines and how to get around. It is fun. So I kind of enjoy that. But I like Disney World. I'm not a huge fan of Disneyland. I've been a few times, but... It does not compare to Disney World. I don't think I, I don't think I did Disney World. I did Universal Studios and the other parks. Orlando, yeah. 
But um, it's fun. I like the Florida aspect of it. So yeah, I uh, speaking of getting to go do drives and stuff, you know, I, I found out that the federal government is like the biggest bureaucracy around. I mean, not that I didn't know that in the last week. Yeah, in the last week, it's really come to my attention that it's even worse than I thought it was. And I can't go into a whole lot of details, unfortunately. But I, I will say things are not good. <laughs> uh, so I hope everybody goes out and votes. How's that? And just yeah. fire everybody. <laughs> Seriously. Ugh. I don't care what your side you're on. Just fire them. Everybody that's in office right now. Nuke them. None I mean, of the above is an none option. None of the above. You type right N O T A, and and that's your write in. None of the above. I'm telling you, some of these guys need to go. I'm there. There's a few people I'm voting for. Barry Hess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, he's for governor in Arizona. I'm voting for him. I know him. I talked with him for years now. Um, he. I think he's a listener, and Barry, you're a little wacky on some things, um, <laughs> but I, I like your politics, so I'm going to vote for him. Uh, but he's the only guy out there saying, I'm not going to spend money on this and that. I'm actually going to get rid of this portion of government or do what I can to do it. So that's just – at this point, man, I, I am frustrated. I had a friend who, who posts this thing on Facebook, oh, and it, it's kind of a cool little deal. He's He works – he's a federal government worker, and – he was talking about that they designed and 3D printed this little missile launcher that sits on their desk and they can like control from their computer, you know, like a USB kind of thing. Okay. And they can shoot little missiles out and some of the guys will fly the helicopter through the office and it's on everybody's cubicle. So they'll shoot it at the helicopter and, you know, it's like a little game that they play in the office. And I, as fun as that is and as much as I love that, I was thinking, you know, how much – did that cost to 3D print for all of Do you have the conversation or did he delete the whole thing? I i don't want to put the conversation up. Well, no. I mean, we don't have to tell. just go through the, how the – because the volley that you explained to yeah. me is what I really enjoyed. I mean, it was – well, I, I, I started asking – and this is a while ago. Because you baited him in. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> – uh, Doctor, there's a, a Warren Gillette on my Facebook thing that always accuses me of baiting him. This one I actually did bait. <laughs> Because every time I, I type a question, he's like, you're baiting me, Don. I was like, okay, Warren. But no, this one I did. I was like, oh, that's, that's really cool. You know, um, you know, where did the three, where'd you get the 3D printer? Oh, I have it at work. Oh, cool. How did you get the design? Well, we designed it. Oh, cool. How long did it take you to do that? You know, and I just kept going through and he answered the questions. And finally I was like, so I wonder how much money that costs the tax dollars. The federal government, you know, maybe you shouldn't even have a job if you've got all this time to do this. And he wasn't happy with me because I did kind of bait all the way through it. It yeah. was mean. You know what though? Sometimes it takes subtle hints of, hey, maybe we shouldn't spend our time doing that isn't going to work anymore. He's always Sometimes you got to about- take a cricket bat to the side of somebody's head with policy. Yeah, yeah, but this is somebody who works for the federal government who thinks that the federal government can do no wrong, and it's not going to change his mind. My my whole thing was I was just really curious how much money it cost me. Yeah, well, you know, and then you get the argument. Well, if, if it's your money, it's only a penny of it. So no, you know, it's I'll a give third it back of to my you. money. Well, and that's the thing, you know, only a not even a penny goes to me. Well, that's great when you're holding a gun to somebody's head and forcing them to give it to you. I don't think it matters if it's a penny or if it's a exactly. all you got. It's still theft. Exactly. <laughs> you're getting me into politics now. Well, and that's okay. Basic. How much of our time? Let's not say money. How much of our time goes to paying the government? Yeah. We work until May. Yeah. We work until May to pay our taxes. That's that's how much we're taxed. And so if you're right wing, left wing, center, I don't care. That's how much you're paying if you have a job and you're working. Right. So – And we shouldn't. I mean I, I understand that – I'm not an anarchist. No. I, I believe in government. Yeah. And, uh, um, I know there's people out there that don't and you've got some very valid arguments. Um, however, I'm not one of those. I haven't gotten there. I haven't gotten there yet. But what I – We're just not that cool yet, Don. Yeah, I know. And I think people misunderstand anarchy too. It's got a negative connotation of violence with it where it's actually not. It's complete volunteerism. I'm on the side – personally on the side of the libertarian side where we need less government. But government still needs to be there. Mm -hmm. I don't even have a problem with taxes. 
I have a problem with property taxes, um, but I don't have a problem with things like consumption taxes. Uh, I, I think it can be done in a more fair way. Let's put it mm-hmm. that way. It's still – you're still being forced to do it. But the amount of government freaking waste that I've seen this week blows my mind. I mean it, it really blows my mind. I will say that it it's unbelievable. And if people could even look into a little bit of of this, they would be as scared as I am as far as where this country's going. Mm. So, so on to what we can do about it. That's right. We can grow our own food. You can grow your own food, produce your own fuel and compost your own food waste. And compost your own food waste, which right. this is something that you know we've we've had another guest on before, and we have an in studio guest coming in, and uh, but the the fact that you're not going to eat everything that you buy at the store, you're not going to eat everything that you grow. Some things that you grow come along with stems and leaves that you don't eat. Right. It's got to go somewhere. Well, heck, what if I told you there was a way that you could not only compost that, but even waste as far as meat. And Meat dairy and dairy things like that, and it wouldn't and, be smelly. And what comes out of your dairy air? Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I didn't ask. I'm not. That's we're not going to go there. Poop, <laughs> rabbit poop, rabbit poop. So we're gonna um, have a great guest in the studio today in the Situation Room. We've got the Bukashi Evolution coming. Bukashi, Bukashi. by Morganic. By Morganic. <laughs> Coolest name ever. Yeah. All right, next up, we've got Morganic in studio. Things just got real. The drugstore is closed and the doctor is unavailable. What are you going to do? Stock your medicine cabinet and bug out bag with nature's alternative, essential oils. Visit mylavenderlife.com for all your essential oil needs. Welcome back to the We Grow Our Show. We have an in-studio guest. Mm -hmm. This is a rare occasion where we get to share the situation room and... Not only are we sharing the situation room, but we have Morganic with us. That's uh, Morgan Cough. Oh my gosh. Coffinger? Coffinger. <laughs> Coffinger. It's a G. It goes both ways. I'm sorry. I told you I'd do it. I told you I'd do it. Anyway, now that I'm beat red, uh, oh my gosh. Now I'm looking at the company name. I just said it. <laughs> Bukashi Evolution. Bukashi Evolution. Should we start over? No, that's right. Okay. That's good. <laughs> oh, good thing you guys can't you see. You know, I'm leaving it in even yeah. if we start over. So this guy, he's got control of the edit button and always hangs me out to dry. It's awesome. But he sounds perfect. I don't know why that is. Always. Anyway, speaking of awesome, uh, <laughs> so we've got Bukashi Evolution. Yes. We're Am I saying that compost. right? Bukashi yes. Evolution. Okay. Compost. This is subject that we really need to hit home. We're building mounds and mounds of trash all around the world. People don't realize they're throwing away gold. So, yeah, we talked last time we did the composting show with Mark. Mm-hmm. You know, we got into the whole uh, I mean, this is what everything comes from mm-hmm. and how we're losing topsoil everywhere. Yes. So, this is something everybody needs to do and can do. And Morgan, it's easy to do, right? Very easy. And you've, your, tell me about your company because the no odor thing is really what intrigues me. Mm-hmm. Well, Bakashi Evolution was founded about two years ago. I had a WUFT, which is an acronym for Worldwide Organic Opportunities for Farmers in Hawaii. Ooh. Beautiful place to go. And that's where I learned how to organic farm. And there is where I learned the style of Bakashi composting. And here I am, you know, waist deep in this huge pile of compost. (laughs) And my teacher is telling me about composting in a bucket. I'm like, well, why the hell am I here? (laughs) Turn these huge compost piles. And so I've never looked back. So Bakashi composting is a Japanese style of uh, composting bakashi is a Japanese term for or uh, fermented organic matter, and wow. it has been around for hundreds of years, and it's very popular. Uh, in fact, the creator of the main ingredient in bakashi composting, uh, his name is Dr. Higa, and he basically 
had this spin off of this traditional composting method where uh, Asian farmers would go into the hills and source these beneficial bacteria, make these incredible inoculants, and then spread them throughout their crops on the soil and really boost the microbial community there. So they're like hunting and gathering bacteria. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Talk about cool. Yeah. <laughs> So good old Dr. Higa made it really easy on us. He formulated basically what's out in the forest uh, into this nifty liquid that we can purchase online at a very uh, reasonable price. And it goes by effective microorganisms. So that is really the gold in Bakashi composting. It's basically phototrophic bacteria, lactic acid, and yeast. And phototrophic bacteria is known in other cultures as purple bacteria. And it's actually, uh, we can thank this purple bacteria for oxygenating our atmospheres. So it's been around for eons. Wow. Thank you, bacteria. <laughs> yeah, well, I, and more and more I'm thinking that and I, I want to slap people that are using the, uh, the hand sanitizer with alcohol. Don't kill that bacteria. It's good for you. <laughs> Well, that's not the one that's good for oh, okay. you. <laughs> so the purple purple bacteria, mm -hmm. purple microbials, mm -hmm. do they actually look purple? They do under uh, a microscope in a Petri dish. I personally have not, you know, been in a laboratory collecting mm. the purple bacteria. I can make that happen. I, I believe you <laughs> I have access to a laboratory that we Perfect. can go look at bacteria in. You'd make a horrible mad scientist, Don. Oh, I would. You're you're too lovable and nice looking. Uh, I went the other way when you said that, but okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> anyway, the, so you've got this ready-to-go compost tea kind of a thing. Basically, what I do is I take the this inoculant, this good bacteria, and I give it a home. And I'm using wheat bran for the time being. And basically, I add the liquid, the liquid bacteria to the wheat bran. I add some non-chlorinated water and some good old organic blackstrap molasses. And that feeds the bacteria. So I put them in these big barrels and they ferment. Then I dry the bakashi and all of the bacteria goes dormant. Ah. So then you can package it and, you know, pass it off to your neighbor. Hey, there you go. So that's your business. Mm -hmm. You sell the. So okay. I make I make bakashi. Uh, I also sell these nifty little bucket kits that you know anyone can make. I only have them on hand for the people that are like, I want to do it now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but well, I encourage people to take the responsibility of you know mm. you can do this yourself. Yeah, that's that's one of the big things that on our last show we talked about. Um, Mark talked about composting mm -hmm. underneath underneath your sink and we actually have done that at home and if you do it right apparently it's not supposed to smell Correct. Um, i guess i'm not doing it right <laughs> because we get an odor out of it but the way i understand it is if i add this to that that'll help keep the odor down and compost things a little bit faster is, th is that kind of what i gather so the beneficial bacteria in the bakashi not only consumes odor causing bacteria but it also breaks down the organic matter. Uh, but it needs to be in this airtight container. So it's not an aerobic style of composting. Gotcha. It's totally the opposite. And when you get those smells, you know that, you know. You've got a leak. You've got a leak. It's anaerobic. Mm -hmm. So if, if I'm understanding that right, you've got some bacteria that are going to be the anaerobic digesters really and then you have another set that are actually eating those and releasing oxygen is that uh it's actually the beneficial bacteria is releasing uh what's called it's an alcohol based it's ester okay. i believe ester yeah yes and so it's non-greenhouse gas forming okay uh it's not harmful so when you open the bucket You'll smell kind of like a sweet pickling of your food scraps, but it does not smell like rancid food scraps under your sink. Nice. So I, I, I do this. Now I take that out. I, I've, I've used the Bakashi. I've got my bucket. It's full. Everything's good. 
how long is the process till, till I get to use it in my garden? Well, this is the first stage. Okay. This is the pickling stage or the fermenting stage. This is when all of the organic matter has been broken down so that plants can consume uh, the nutrients at the cellular level. We just got to get it into the ground. Okay. So we dig this big trench in our garden bed, uh, dump your food scraps into your trench, not your bucket. A lot of people are like, so I buried my bucket. <laughs> I'm like, don't bury the bucket. Oh. <laughs> I should have a picture diagram. <laughs> <laughs> so you dump this fermented food scraps and then you bury it. Okay. And you've got about three inches of soil on top uh, and you wait two weeks and then you can plant directly on top. So we're talking two weeks sitting alone in the bucket, two weeks in your garden bed, 30 days to reaping your black gold. Nice. Wow. Super fast. Now, I like it. can you use other things? <laughs> I'm going to go here because we always do. Can you use, yeah, it should be Nick. Poop. Yeah. You can you use poop? other things like rabbit poop? Of course. I mean, we're always looking for ways to get rid of rabbit poop. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was I producing my... 400 pounds of rabbit manure a day. So yeah. poop's a big deal. <laughs> so we've done the black fishy. soldier flies. Yeah, and I, I do vermiculture. And we're making rabbit poop cubes to plant things in. I so, we're, uh, you know, we're always like, okay, what else can we do with poop? So so we can use that as, as part of this? Sure. Absolutely. So, oh, how cool. Absolutely. That's awesome. You see, I, I've, you know, I've, I've played with, uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. here we go. Anaerobic digestion, uh, for methane production as a, a fuel source. Um, think flamethrower. Yes. I, awesome. I built a flamethrower that runs on rabbit poop. It's. Both. Wow, do you do parties? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I show up in a big bunny suit holding the flamethrower. Oh, Cops are called. In a bunny suit. I got to get one, seriously. Uh, no, please. No. <laughs> <laughs> Your nightmare has now become reality. <laughs> All right. Uh, but anyway, we at the end of the anaerobic digestion process, there's a substance that is completely teeming with bacteria. I mean, there's a ton of stuff in it. And I'm wondering if... Maybe at that point, if it would still benefit to break down further with your methods of having the the other bacteria introduced to, I don't know if it would be beneficial or not, to continue breaking it down. I mean, rabbit manure by itself can go onto the garden and just break down over time, but to get a real punch. Yeah, because I like the black, I, like you said, the, that black gold. Mm-hmm. I mean, that beautiful soil. Mm-hmm. I, I love planting in that stuff because it, it – yeah, I do aquaponics. That's kind of my thing. And I see a huge yield um, increase using aquaponics. But when you're using the right soil, I mean, for other things that I can't do in my aquaponics garden, it makes a huge difference. Uh, there, There's a huge growth difference between when I go out and grab some dirt and put it in or when I feed my food um, and my plants the, the proper nutrition. And just like in aquaponics, I'm getting, growing potatoes, things like that, and carrots, all of my root vegetables. I need soil Mm -hmm. and i'm always looking for a good way to get soil and i'm not a huge fan of composting not like mark who wants to go play in compost yeah i I, i'm just i don't like it so i want to i want to reap the benefits really fast well and see that's where i think we're stuck in that paradigm of it's garbage you know i don't want to play with garbage i want to play with new stuff but this is this is now i'm excited because now it's a science project with my garbage absolutely when you start i was amazed too when i all right (laughs) so i've got a family of five and the amount of food waste that we have blew my mind when we started the composting because we started with a bucket under the sink and i put all the banana peels in there scrape all the dishes in there rather than in the garbage and it filled up like two days i'm like wow I didn't know I was wasting this because we're also feeding our chickens a lot of our waste. So I assumed most of it was going out to the chickens. So we're taking the same amount of stuff out to the chickens, but it's just the little stuff that's ending up in the bucket and it's filling up that fast. So we have to change a few things, but I still want to use it. I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want to put it in the dumpster. Well, yeah, that's that's throwing away money. I mean, I well, it's funny. I've My, mo- my mom, <laughs> I also live at home, uh, my wife wouldn't let me get a dog. So I've got water turtles and a tortoise. And so anything that comes off the table that's meat goes into the water turtles because they're carnivorous and omnivorous. And anything that's green goes to the tortoise. And so we don't really have 
I mean, they yeah. they both turn it into compost in their own certain ways, but <laughs> but uh, it's that rabbit manure. I got to figure out how to how to break it down and get it out there. Now, now one of the things that um, Mark was saying, he lives up in where? Where does he live? Southern accent, Tennessee, I Tennessee, somewhere like that. So what I'm finding in composting is I'm drying out very fast. So I understand that you kind of do things differently in the desert. I mm-hmm. mean, your product works in the desert. This is perfect for the desert. So you're taking, so in a traditional compost pile, it, like you said, it gets super hot and it gets dried out and you're constantly out there with the hose and the water bill is sky high. Um, with this method, you're keeping all of the moisture from the food scraps locked in this bucket as well as all the nutrients. So in an outdoor pile, you have this off-gassing of methane. Those are nutrients just going into the atmosphere. So we get to keep all those. So that's another added benefit. And then once it's transferred into the soil, it stays wet in the soil. Extremely wet. So much so that last summer I had a family vacation in Austin and I I stopped watering the garden. I told my plants, look, I'm really sorry, but got to go. And I, you're kind of my experiment right now. And my little garden plot was, you know, full of this Bokashi food waste. I didn't water it for the whole week, middle of July. Wow. I get back. That's a death sentence. Right? <laughs> I know. I felt like a bad plant mom. <laughs> I get back and... The summer squash looked sad, like uh-huh. it does in the middle of the afternoon. It looked a little tired, like it was ready for happy hour. <laughs> and But the baby watermelons were sprawling and flowers, and they were so excited to see me. And I put my finger into the soil, and about an inch down, it was wet. There really? was legitimate moisture. And that was my confirmation that, I absolutely need to be here in Arizona telling people, everyone, about this food waste recycling method because it works. Yeah. It's great. That's awesome. So where, while we're on that, where do people reach you? Well, I'm located in Tempe. Okay. Uh, Normally, I'd be at the farmer's markets, uh, the downtown Phoenix market, as well as the new super awesome Tempe farmer's market under the 202. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've kind of pulled back in anticipation of this big trip I'm going on in January. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll be going to New Zealand to shoot a documentary about Bakashi composting. How cool is that? And it is it is huge there. Really? I contacted the organic farmer that first introduced Bakashi composting to the islands. Um, I'd say... Uh, Mid nineties. Mm-hmm. His name's Neville Burt, coolest guy ever. You guys would love to have him on your show. His name's Neville. He I has know. to be cool. I know. <laughs> He's the coolest guy. Put in a good word for us. I you. will. Yes. He's really hard to understand because we're American and he's Kiwi. And what is Kiwi? He has an accent. He's a New Zealander. Oh, okay. I'm like I'm Kiwi. I, I know that's a fruit. But what? <laughs> to- <laughs> I am uncultured. <laughs> You're fine. You're just hungry. <laughs> Always. Is that a fat joke? <laughs> I get it. That's cool. Moving on. <laughs> we got to edit that one out. <laughs> yeah, right. You think he'll edit that out? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I, I, it was probably a, after a happy hour. I'm like, I'm going to email this guy. He's my super number one hero. I got to see if Bakashi composting really is as big as I think it is. Because I created this huge story in my head about how there's zero food scraps and everyone's growing gardens and there's this huge movement there. Wrote Neville an email, then 24 hours wrote me back. And basically he confirmed with me that that's real. Really? And you dreamed it and it became true. That's awesome. Magic. Wow. It's like the Willy Wonka's chocolate factory of (laughs) composting going on in New Zealand. Quite spectacular. I want a golden ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he he kind of laid out this grassroots movement for me, and to me the defining moment is back in 2008 they passed what's called the Waste Minimalization Act. 
is so extreme and probably so difficult for us Americans to comprehend that there really isn't much going to the landfills anymore. It's really just the big bulk items. I mean, when you have a civilization on a, an island, mm -hmm. they're very aware of their waste. And that's something that I miss having lived on Maui. People were more aware. And New Zealand, they're extremely aware. Hmm. So Make everybody I will... live on an island like Hawaii for a little while. Exactly. Yes, make me do that, please. <laughs> well, it's funny. She says that that's, that's what you miss about the island. I'm thinking I'd be mitch missing those beaches, man. <laughs> but that's me. I didn't want to rub it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to. It was just happening. Every time I hear Hawaii, I, I want to go. <laughs> anyway, that is, that is pretty cool. I, you figure real estate is probably through the roof there. So putting a dump in is probably not the best investment. Landfills cost billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. And there, what they're doing now is they're, um, I believe in Auckland, they're starting a new program where they have these little microchips in these buckets. Uh, and they're small. They created them. They're like trash bins. They're very small, kind of like uh, grocery store baskets. Okay. They're about that size. And you have a red bin for landfill. You have a yellow bin for recycle and a green bin for green waste or food scraps. But the red bin has a little chip in it. So when they go to pick that up, they weigh it and you're charged. Could you imagine you're charged by wow. the pound? That's what they're going to be experiencing. Isn't there similar acts being passed in, in different states around the U.S., though? I don't, you know, I, I always thought you shouldn't do that. It's really dumb. And the more I get into growing my own food, the more I get into the food movement, mm -hmm. I, I got to admit, I'm changing my mind on that. Yeah, I think it would be wonderful if that was the case um, because it's it, – we waste so much in this nation. Over 97% yeah. of food waste generated – ends up in the landfill, according to the EPA. 97%. Think of all the topsoil. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's uh, – we've, we've been talking about black soldier flies, and black soldier flies love eating fresh food scraps. And black soldier flies can turn into money, like, immediately. So it's almost like there should be a capitalist already like, oh, hey, I'll take all your garbage and throw Absolutely. it in my black soldier fly bin. Yeah. But, I mean, And if anybody wants to do that, we'll take a cut. <laughs> yeah, for coming up with the idea. <laughs> exactly. Just leaked call... your new venture. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we grow ours at PayPal.com. You can send your money anytime. There you go. So, so now, how are you going on this trip to New Zealand? So, I am doing a Indiegogo campaign. Uh, so, I'm in the middle of finishing this little cute, funny video, uh, talking about the trip, how much money I'll need. Uh, but I'm basically saving up. I'm also a waitress. So I, I'm saving all my tips. I'm my own personal investor. <laughs> and uh, so I'll, I'll be going on this trip, hopefully with a friend of mine who will have some filming equipment, fingers crossed. And we'll, you know, cruise around the island for two weeks, hitting up all these incredible people Neville has lined up. And then edit the, the footage and create this awesome documentary. How cool. I want to see it. Right? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and tour, you know, schools and universities and eco villages and invite, you know, people outside of eco villages to come and interact and, you know, really just kind of pump up this movement, get a little excitement going around. I think it needs, it needs some excitement. Seriously. Talking about yeah. compost and going to workshops, you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have it, – it's almost like we need to see the bigger picture and we need to see things that are working to see how great they could be. And I feel like Arizona's a little, little behind and we can't really imagine it. And that's why it's not moving as quickly. So and you're going to change that. I hope so. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> yeah, I think it will be great. And so, that's that reminds me, I, I read something about this group doing something similar with the Sahara. Where um, they're they're doing a lot of permaculture uh, and soil treatment, but they found that the microbials that were accidentally introduced into the soil were actually causing um, salt blockage 
Like oh, salt, wow. salt was being suppressed. So the pH was able to maintain and the, uh, and moisture was, was being held in the mulch and the stuff. And, and so they're in a non conventional way, they're able to take back desert. So we're oh. in the desert. And everybody is so hell bent on watering lawns and and the you know, having their swimming pools and stuff, which I'm never going to have those things because I'm too cheap. But uh, <laughs> you know, if if we just had something like this going, that's very pretty. Um, gardening is very pretty, and you don't have to have a big compost pile. That's I think that's the selling point here. Is no, you don't have to have a giant pile of decomposing matter on the side of your yard waiting for it to become soil. You can actively engage it, and that's pretty cool. Absolutely. And for those that do have these big piles, don't stop what you're doing. Take your fermented food scraps that are rich with this microbial uh, community, dig a hole in the center of it, dump it in the middle, and you've created this huge compost bomb. Oh, and really watch the pile break down that way. So I'm – speaking of bombs uh, – <laughs> The alcohol, the type of alcohol that's being produced, you called it ester? I believe it's ester. Is that? Uh, I've heard of that. Okay. Because I, I have not. I know of ethanol and methanol. I'm very <laughs> ethanol, methanol. But if there's alcohol being produced, that means there's fuel capabilities with this too. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just saw the little, <laughs> the sloth from uh, the crudes. No? Yeah. Nothing? You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Okay, yeah. Da, da, da. Anyway, <laughs> awesome. Moving on. Uh, yeah, that would be that would be great. Just now, you've got an alcohol coming off as an exhaust, really. And yeah, you, how does the alcohol does? I would. What happens to the alcohol? That's does it just evaporate? It off? just evaporates. Mm-hmm. That'd be interesting. Mm-hmm. That sounds like you got a cool next project. Gears going now. Oh my gosh, I'm so pumped right now because I've, I'm already need an excuse to build a whiskey still. I don't even drink alcohol, but I'm going to do it. I'll drink it. <laughs> it's like compost, ester, alcohol. Sounds like a party. <laughs> I think you can go blind just smelling it. I don't know. Again, this is not harmful. Okay. <laughs> yes. Everyone's like, I'm never going to do that. <laughs> so, all right, back to – you got me way off Thanks for there. Thanks for bringing us back. Yeah, no on. problem. So you're doing the Indiegogo. You're mm-hmm. going to raise funds, go to New Zealand, bring it back. And what's what happens after that? I mean, you're 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 going to share this thing. What what are your overall goals? What are you going to My current overall goal besides getting it out there is I think it'd be super awesome to be able to pick up bakashi in the grocery store. So I'd love to have this product in the grocery store and have it become just second nature. Here we are buying our groceries, which you know, hopefully not majority of them end up in the compost bucket, but I should probably get my Bakashi and then just try to get it incorporated into a daily routine. And that will also help people be more responsible and aware of what they're purchasing at the grocery store. You know, don't yeah, overbuy. You don't want to pro- well, the processed foods, things like that. You don't want that in your compost. Absolutely. I mean, I'm amazed doing this stuff. Um, I'm just, I was amazed at what we were wasting. It, 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 until you start doing something, you don't realize it. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think you're right, is the more and more people you can bring on. And I'm going to take this a step further. I mean, this is something that you can do in a very small container. So it's portable. So uh, we're preppers. That's a, a big part of our audience. I see a big prepping application with this because it looks to me like you can store this long term. And have it ready for if you have to go. We're always preaching that, hey, you need your stored food, you know, your MREs, whatever it happens to be, for a few months while you get your gardens going, while you get all of this going. This is, this like fits in. You put this right in your cabinet with your prepper stuff. And now something happens. You can go out and plant your own food and you've, you've got what you need. So how, how much, I mean, once I buy this, how much do I need? And, you know, how long does it last? Uh, I've read studies saying that it's it can be activated as far as, you know, three years down the road. Uh, but I encourage people to, you know, use within the year. So, yeah, just mm-hmm. keep it going. Rotate it. 
Absolutely. That's that's the next question is the bacteria they they do increase their their culture, right? Like they'll this isn't a a sterile like a Ridex bacteria. This is something that will continue to reproduce, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, but once you put it in the garden, it's going to get used up. Yeah, okay. It will interact with the native beneficial bacteria in your soil, and that's what's so incredible about these beneficial bac- or microorganisms is that they work together. And specifically, the phototrophic bacteria actually makes plants larger and bigger and healthier. So you can get, you know, increased yields also from the application. Wow. Very cool. Oh, and I forgot. You can also compost meat and dairy products in your bucket. <laughs> hey, there you go. I know you have some rabbit, rabbit <laughs> scraps. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, my wheels are turning here. I know what to, uh, usually I just feed them to the turtles, but. And the reason the why go. you can have meat and dairy and fish, things like that, and processed foods, uh, is because the acidity is so high when you're fermenting the food scraps. So that the, uh, chance of, you know, bad bacteria forming or E. coli or things like that, are completely diminished because they wouldn't be able to survive. That's it. Does this get hot like normal composting? It does not. It's definitely because you're a doing cold a completely different. Compost. I mean, you're fermenting. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. So uh, people can find you at BakashiEvolution dot com. Mm-hmm. Facebook. What's your Facebook? Bakashi Evolution. I'm excited. I want to get some now. That's awesome. What's that white powder you got there? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I have one more really awesome yeah. thing. Let's this will it. really seal the deal. <laughs> so the beneficial bacteria in Bakashi, the very same bacteria that you get in any bag of Bakashi, has been used to reduce radioactivity after Fukushima, has been used to clean up uh, the Katrina oil spill or Katrina disaster relief uh, efforts, oil spills, how does that Clean work? water. It's just angry eating everything bacteria. It likes to consume pollutants and toxins. And not just in, you know, polluted areas, but in your soil as well. Oh, how cool. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, wow, that is cool. Oh, what about the hot topic GMOs? Oh, no. I personally asked Jeffrey Smith, one of the leading GMO-free activists out there, uh, when he came to town, uh, I think earlier this year, are we able to eradicate a GMO by fermentation? And he said, yes, that his team of scientists had said that that was totally legitimate. That you could break down GMO by fermenting it. You know, I had never thought about if you took a GMO, I mean, food and put it into... You know, your compost, traditional compost pile, does that, can that cause problems in your vegetables? Yeah, I'd say those same molecules that were in it are going to be. But you're not pulling up. That's interesting. That's kind of cool. So we can use this and not worry about it. All right. Well, good deal. Well, that that brings up, uh, I guess, the carbon that we're made of is mostly derived from corn, whether we've eaten that corn or not, just because everything else is eating that corn. And they're able to trace that carbon back. So when they're using a GMO corn, yeah, we're getting that carbon strand. So I don't know how, if GMOs on the molecular level are harmful. I don't, I really don't know if, I don't know any of that stuff, but I don't like the fact that they're introducing new species that have never been on the planet like year after year. They're just making up new stuff with really no foresight to the consequences might come. So yeah, it'd be nice to, all right, I'm going to turn you into alcohol and compost. (laughs) Boom! That GMO. How about no? (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Now Dawn's turning red. See, I wasn't embarrassed when I said that. Uh, No, I was not embarrassed. (laughs) Oh my gosh. On that note, so let's see, what else we got? We got this cool little bucket goes underneath the sink. All your stuff goes in there. And you turn it into black gold. And we need to hear more from our New Zealander friends. And we're sending her on a mission to do that. So you can help by going to 
Uh, www.bakashievolution.com. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. What will you do when your stored supplies run out? Are you prepared? Hostel Hair provides equipment and education you need to control your own infinite food supply. We have live food storage systems, rabbits, quail, and other urban livestock for any situation and strategy. Don't be limited by what's on the shelves. Get started with an infinite food source today. Get prepped, stay fed with Hostel Hair. Call 480-331-3761 or visit HostelHair.com. need like a thousand more interviews just like that just like that that was awesome it, it it's fun to have a casual conversation where it's like hey there's microphones here i agree <laughs> i get to look at somebody other than you it's like, oh come on don i'm a good looking feller uh-huh <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah the cuteness in the room definitely went up when she walked in yeah it was, Subsequently, uh, it went down after she left. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> she ain't mad at us now. Yeah. No, that was a, a, a – she did a wonderful job. I, uh, I'm i excited to try this stuff. Well, and that's – and a girl like that, that's somebody who needs to be the spearhead of an organization. Yeah, she's got passion for it. Passion. She's likable. You know, she's a perfect – she's a perfect front runner for this. So yeah. I, I think that she's got a great plan and uh, I'm willing to support it. So it's BukashiEvolution.com. Bukashi Evolution. And I hope some of our listeners go take a look. We're going to have in our show I notes. I hope all our listeners do. Yeah. Well, I, I hope you guys actually donate and mm-hmm. go to her uh, her website and check out her Indiegogo campaign. I think is, I'm saying that right. Indiegogo. I don't know. When she said it, I was like, man, I'm so not hip. What yeah, does that Yeah, I mean? know. It's a fundraising thing. So she can get some cash Oh, together is it crowd? And, yeah, crowd crowdfunding. Re- okay, crowdfunding. Crowd so- yeah, crowdfunding. Crowdsourcing, crowdfunding. So many new cool things out there and I'm just not up on it. Well, help support her because we need something like that. Like I said, I, I you know, the amount of waste that our culture has is just unreal. Oh, and we're coming down from the effects of, of, uh, Oh man, what the heck is that called? I don't I, know. The <sighs> there's a saying: global warming. Yes, no. <laughs> it's basically, throw it away. It's the throw it away society. Yeah, where it doesn't Using throw it away. Doesn't work anymore. Just throw yeah, it away. But it's. I mean, we're throwing away so much good waste. Mm-hmm. That's the thing. I mean, I. I uh, well, yeah. Go know, in the back of a grocery store. I used to store. fill up one of those huge dumpster things at my house. Yeah, and you go to a grocery store is a really good example. Why can't somebody come up like you said and start grabbing that stuff and mm-hmm. go and make and compost out of it, and you can turn around and sell that? I mean, it's work. I mean, it's not get rich quick. Yeah, it's but it's work. not miracle grow in a bag at uh, Home exactly. Depot either, which is a bunch of chemicals, frankly, made by Monsanto. You know, half of the stuff is laden with this crap. Mm-hmm. And we're, oh, let's go get some potting soil and grow our vegetables in it. Yeah. And we've got all this waste. I mean, go to your own grocery store and dumpster dive a little. It's amazing what you can get out of there. And, and Bring a pitchfork like because when you're going through it with your hands and you hit a tomato, it's just unpleasant. I, I worked at one of my first jobs was <laughs> was at Safeway, right? Uh-huh. And they have the, the fryers for the chicken. Uh-huh. Like they, they do the, the chicken fryers. And okay. that oil starts to stink after a while. Well, yeah. That, that smell in that. Well, I, I, t- I have to go dump this stuff oh, out no. in the, in the dumpster and I pick it up. And this is like my second day on the job. And I reach up to put, pour it into the, to the oil catcher or whatever the heck it was. And it slipped. It dumped all over me. Uh, I was uh, vomiting, slipping, uh, you know, the <laughs> smell. I was like, I'm, I'm done. I need to go home. It was all in my hair. And it was horrid. It was horrid. So watch going to that kind of dumpster. But, you know, but you can go out and, and grab all this stuff they throw away. I, you know, it's. It, well, and now they've got oil catches. You can't put that into a regular dumpster anymore. No, it wasn't a regular. It was an oil thing. It was an oil receptacle and you managed to do that? Yeah. Well, you had to lift it over your head and dump it in. Really? It was like a dumpster for oil. That's weird because now they're all like waste level. Yeah. I know this because we were harvesting used vegetable oil for – This wasn't. This was like basically a dumpster they put oil in. (laughs) I don't know what happened to it. I didn't ask. Whatever. It was gross. (laughs) You put it in the wrong dumpster. (laughs) It was was gross and I I did what I was told to do and it fell on me. It dumped on me. It was disgusting. It was like a five-gallon bucket. 
Oh. You know, and I think the uh, the little handle popped off, the little metal handle popped off of it, and it went right on me. It was gross. Anyway, uh, back to, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm so... We try to have people on anywhere from martial arts to guns to whatever, but this is part of it. Yes. This is part of prepping. This is part of growing your own. This is what we need to do. Um, she works, uh, I think does some classes with the VPA as well uh-huh. and, you know, is out there doing that. But her dream isn't to teach 10 or 15 people in a class to reach out that are already aware of this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's to reach out across from, from what I can tell. And you're right. She's got the personality to do it, to go yeah. somewhere, film this thing, and people are going to want to watch it. Uh, 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 there's a pretty girl talking about this stuff. People are going to watch it. It's fun to watch. She's got this great attitude about it. And then share it with people that probably wouldn't otherwise be interested in compost. And I think that's what's cool. I think you can go do that and share and and eventually maybe even get it into the grocery store where it becomes mainstream. So I wish her all the luck. And I hope our listeners go support her as well. Yep. So what else you got, Nick? Well, it's too late to promote the fact that we're teaching at the Prepper event. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed the <laughs> classes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hope I did a decent job with the Black Soldier Flies because I completely <laughs> forgot until just now. I, I totally wrangled you into that, too. That was hilarious. Yeah. She's like, do you know anybody that does Black Soldier Fly? Yes, I do. Don Cupper. He's an expert. Don, you gonna teach a class? What? <laughs> but I, I what? <laughs> We're gonna have yeah. a booth too. I'm, I'm excited. Yes. We got, our, we got a nice little setup. I think. Yeah. We haven't looked at it <laughs> you yet. You think? <laughs> well, it's still in boxes. Yeah, but... it's in a, it's in a box. It's about. It's in a couple of 18... boxes. One. No, I've got oh, a you banner got, in a okay, box. Got I've got other too. stuff okay. in a box. I've got a sign in a box. That's so true. We're gonna be unboxing all of our stuff and putting it together at the, uh, at the thing. Oh, our. Uh, so, yeah, come, I hope you enjoyed seeing us. <laughs> Keep wanting to say come see us, but I guess it's Come not see happen. us in November up in Kingman. In Kingman, yeah. Nice. Or at least come see Nick. Yeah. Oh, you're not going to You're going to have hostile come? hair up there, right? But you're not going to come? I don't know. It's a long drive. <laughs> <laughs> I might have something else happening that weekend. Oh, well, fine. Screw you. Yeah, well. <sighs> what a jerk. <laughs> Anyways. <On that> note, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do we got? That's pretty much it. I think so. Well, thank you guys for joining us. It's been a swell evening or awesome. morning or whatever time of day it is. You're listening to the freaking podcast because it's not exactly live. Now, is it? Anyway, we love you all. Thanks for listening.